what's going on guys killer six back with another borderlands top 10 video and this time we're taking a look at the top 10 items from previous borderlands games that i would like to see return in borderlands 3. these are my personal picks but as always i'd love to hear what you guys think so post a comment down below let me know what you guys would like to see return if you enjoy these types of videos please take a second tap that subscribe button for more with that let's get started number 10 Let's start things off with one of my favorite blue unique weapons from Borderlands 2, the Lasco. This SMG featured a high fire rate and crazy good hipfire accuracy, making it a fun weapon that was super easy to get. The Lasco would spawn every single time you entered Frostburn Canyon, you just had to head over to this spot on the map and it'd be sitting right there in a puddle. Now you could also abuse that by going in and out of the Frostburn Canyon door when you first came to that area multiple times and then when you get to the puddle you'd have multiple Lascos sitting there in the puddle. Now I secretly had hoped that this was going to be hidden in Borderlands 3 when it launched and I spent a ridiculous amount of time checking puddles on every single map. I would love for the Lasco to make a return. Number 9 Coming in at number 9, let's jump over to the pre-sequel and cover a weapon that I loved on that game, the Excalibastard. Much like the Lasco, this was a weapon that was hidden on the outer edges of a map called Stanton's Liver. This gun allowed you a 100% freeze chance and then by stabbing a frozen enemy with it, it would create a singularity that pulled in enemies and then did a cryo nova. This would add a much needed melee weapon and another good laser to Borderlands 3 and I think that this gun would be an absolute blast to play with on borderlands 3 number eight and number eight let's talk about the sham yeah the 94 percent sham i want it back not because we necessarily need a super high absorb shield but because i want something to chase in borderlands 3 and this is something you're going to hear over and over again before this list is over i guarantee you but I would love to see another bunker-like boss, maybe in a raid version that can drop the sham, but depending on the parts, it could have as low as a 77% absorb chance or as high as a 94% absorb chance. This would give us a very good shield for Flak or Zane and another way to generate ammo passively. Plus, who wouldn't want to hunt that elusive 94 sham again? Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, guys? Yes! Number seven. Coming in at number seven, the machine. This was a powerful, unique sniper from Borderlands, the pre-sequel. And it was basically a sniper version of the Tizzy pistol from Borderlands 3. It started up slow and then it became basically a laser death machine spewing a million bullets per second after it had time to speed up. This made it one of the strongest and most fun overall weapons in the pre-sequel. Originally when that game came out it had no dedicated loot source but it was eventually added in as a random world drop item and was eventually also given away via shift code as well. If this gun made it into Borderlands 3 I would love for it to remain a unique blue item just to give those a feeling of being powerful again and can you imagine having this on like a Mose or even on flak or hell i would i would use this on zane all the time man i loved this gun number six at number six how about a grenade mod the chain lightning was one of the most fun non-grenade grenades that you will ever use it was quite literally like throwing lightning bolts but they would chain and hit multiple enemies. This was largely useful as a way to heal yourself while holding the grognaz on Borderlands 2, but I would love to see it in Borderlands 3 as a functional grenade that is more about damage and crowd control. Number five. Coming in at number five, the Cobra. This was one of the hardest items to obtain legitimately in Borderlands 2, requiring you to farm burner enemies in the Torg DLC, most often in the beatdown map on your way to Pyro Pete's Bar. Personally, I was only able to get a handful of these in all my years playing Borderlands 2, and the worst part about that was, for as cool as this gun looks, it was depressingly bad at doing damage. That said, I would love for it to come back to Borderlands 3, since splash damage is so much better optimized in Borderlands 3. We do already have several other quality snipers especially jacob's manufactured ones but that pink tiny tina skin which just looks so cool while popping heads plus again we want things to hunt add this to the loot pool of some random enemy at one percent drop chance and i guarantee you that we will be all over that farm number four at number four let's shift gears a little bit and go with something that's not a unique blue not a unique purple not a legendary the double anarchy 
This non-unique, non-legendary item from Borderlands 1 was just an absolute beast. Laser accurate hipfire, insane DPS, the double anarchy was a near perfect weapon. The best way for me to describe how this gun feels to anybody who has never played Borderlands 1 is to say this. Imagine if the light show and the monarch had a little baby gun and that's the double anarchy. Tons of projectiles all flying in a tight burst and melting enemies and you could get it from vendors, chests, random drops anywhere and once you found it it would last you for a large chunk of levels now granted we already have some amazing smgs in borderlands 3 but that's the beauty of adding something like this it will further expand the way people play and build their characters number three and number three, the Twister was a very hard to get shotgun from Borderlands 2. And the reason it was so hard to get was that it required you to spawn a hidden boss named Om Om Ak in the Hammerlock Hunt DLC. This was no easy feat either. In all my years of playing Borderlands 2, I maybe spawned triple O 10 times total by myself. It was easier with four players, but even then he was never a guaranteed spawn. And then he wasn't guaranteed to drop the Twister when you killed him, meaning you might have to get him to spawn again and kill him again in order to potentially get this thing to drop but once you had a twister you knew it was worth the effort because this shotgun was just fun granted like most items in borderlands 2 it was barely functional on op levels but that's more to do with poor op scaling than with the actual weapon itself so yeah i would love for the son of omd omd ok to make an appearance in borderlands 3 and drop us a twister number two Coming in at number two is the Norfleet. This legendary launcher was only obtainable from killing one of two raid bosses in Borderlands 2, which gave us a very compelling reason to take on Hyperius and or Vermivorous. This is largely the problem with the Guardian Takedown's final boss. After killing him, your loot rewards are largely disappointing. Bringing back traditional raid bosses and giving one of them a 10% chance to drop the Norfleet. Oh baby, you can bet the player base will be all over that. Right now, the player base is in love with the Backburner and Plaguebearer, but having the Norfleet back would give them some serious competition. Just make sure that it's really hard to get. Honorable mention. For honorable mentions, there is a ton of other things that I would like to bring back for various reasons. Let's go over them real quick here, though. The Donk, the Gub, the Bada Boom, Lady Fist, Antagonist Shield, Orphan Maker, and Fibber. Obviously, the Gub and the Donk is just for me and Jolt Dude in the memes. The Bada Boom for rocket jumping. The Lady Fist for that crazy crit damage. The Antagonist for amazing all-around shield. It can also send out projectiles that debuff enemies. Orphan Maker for the high projectile, high damage, but at the cost of your character's HP, bar jacob shotgun and the fibber just because sometimes it's fun to shoot the floor and watch hp bars zero out lightning fast number one Finally, coming in at number one is the Bisha. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, the real number one for me, at least, is the Pimpernel. This unique sniper rifle was one of my favorite weapons ever in any video game. The way this bad boy worked was similar to how the complex root in Borderlands 3 works, but, well, differently. So when you shoot an enemy in the crotch, the Pimpernel's projectile would split apart and go upward and out inside of these enemies to hit all of their other hitboxes. This allowed you to do all sorts of wild stuff, including one-shotting certain bosses and even hitting multiple multiple targets when mobbing. Long story short, the Pimpernel was such a wild change of pace for a sniper that it became a must have for pretty much every playthrough that I did. And getting one was easy, but getting a good one was crazy complicated since this was a quest reward and you couldn't truly farm it. You had to do a read only farm and stash the good ones in your secret stash locker and sanctuary. So if they do bring it back, I hope they put it on an enemy that we can actually farm. Maybe bring back Hurley or put Innuendo bot in the game as a raid boss and have him drop it regardless if the pimpernel makes it back to borderlands 3 i will be a happy man real quick let me just say i know that some of you guys are gonna maybe gripe about the fact that i kind of made fun of the b shield there i don't want the b shield back in borderlands 3 because borderlands 3 is scaled so much better than borderlands 2 at end game that we don't need something like the b shield so that's the reason why i kind of uh poked a little fun at it there so that's my top 10 items i'd like to bring back from previous borderlands games let me know in the comments section down below what items you would like to see make a return if you enjoyed my top 10s, please take a second and tap that like button. Hit subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a great day.